years ago, I was experiencing severe dandruff, hair loss, and graying hair, and I was wondering what was really the cause and trigger of it, and how could I get my old hair back? So I went through a year's worth of research and testing different products and routines, and I finally developed a realistic hair care routine to maintain that keeps my hair healthy and happy. My hair now has no products. I didn't straighten it or treat it in any way, shape, or form. And as you can see, I have no more dandruff. Yay! Well, I'm not a hair care expert. I wanted to share with you all the research that I've done and everything that's actually worked for me and how you can develop a tailored routine. Let's get into it. So I used to be too lazy to brush my hair regularly and I would use my fingers in the shower to detangle my hair. Little did I know, but this habit really worsened the hair loss that I was experiencing because when you brush your hair when it's wet, it's more prone to breakage, it's more prone to damage, it could also become more rough and less smooth over time. So what I do now instead is I use a wide bristle comb. Before I shower, the first thing I do is brush my hair and I start from the very bottom of my roots, holding the middle of my hair so that if there are any tangles, it won't pull the entire strand out slowly working my way up to the very top of my head. This one's called the Tangle Teaser. I'm sure you might have heard of it. It has some very soft, flexible bristles, which means it's not really gonna get too caught on any of the knots you might have in your hair. So I do use this at home, but you can also bring it outside with you. And the back side is really cool. It's got a mirror on the back. I'm a little bit neurotic with my items. I like leaving a sticker on my mirrors. And you don't have to use this one. You can use any wide bristle comb. I will be linking everything I'm mentioning down in the description box below. Some of them may be affiliate links, which means that I may earn a very small commission off of your purchase at no cost to you, of course. And I typically use affiliate links for this channel because I accept fewer sponsorships because of how picky I am when it comes to curating products. And I will never recommend you anything I don't love and use myself. Very hot water can damage your scalp health, it can dry out all the oils on your head, and from the dryness it can cause flakiness and dandruff as well. It can also weaken your hair roots, cause premature graying or frizz. So right now when I shower I always make sure that I turn on the temperature to lukewarm, feel it with my hands before I step in, and if you absolutely have to take a hot scalding shower, make sure you cool your hair down at the end of the shower with some cold water to seal the cuticles. There are so many reasons that you might be experiencing hair loss, dandruff, or graying hair, but if you don't really isolate what the problem is, then you can't develop a routine that fits it properly. So at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some important questions that you should ask yourself so you can develop an effective hair care routine for yourself. So one of the things that I realized I was doing wrong when I was shampooing my hair is I wasn't taking enough time to shampoo my hair properly. I would just do it really quickly for about 10, 15 seconds, thinking that was enough, um, and then rinse it out. But my hair would grow oily right away. I would still have dandruff. Really take my time for at least 30 seconds to a minute to really soak my hair and get it wet before I apply any shampoo. I find it lathers so much better and is a lot more effective that way. I really noticed such a big difference when I bought a shower head that has a handheld part because it really helps target specific areas so you're not left with patches of dryness. I have a very oily scalp and I can have quite dry ends. So I wanted to find a product that really fought against dandruff and helps against hair loss and graying hair. And this has to be one of my favorite shampoos I've ever tried. It's really helped get my hair to where it is right now. This I actually found at Costco. I'll link it down below. This is not an affiliate link. This is just something that I absolutely love. After a couple months of using it, I've noticed so much less dandruff. It's extremely gentle. It smells kind of fresh and woodsy because of all of the medicinal herbs. It uses ginseng, green tea, extracts. In general, you should take two to three minutes shampooing your hair, whether you're shampooing once or twice, just to make sure you're getting enough lather to really get to the roots all around your head, especially if you have a lot of hair. Sometimes I'll double shampoo. Each molecule attracts dirt, attracts water, and that's how it gets out of your hair. There might not be enough micelles in your shampoo in your first try to get rid of all of that oil or dirt. So that's why you sometimes need to double shampoo. And I like using this brand for it because it's quite gentle and you won't overstrip your hair of natural oils. Make sure to take your time to rinse out all of your shampoo before you move on to conditioner. 
make sure to squeeze out all the water from your hair as much as possible before you apply your conditioner so that it can really absorb. I prefer thicker conditioners so they can really grab onto your hair strands and seal in that moisture. And then I leave it in for about four to five minutes while I finish the rest of my shower routine. And I find it's made a huge difference in giving me soft and silky hair. So unfortunately, this brand is often out of stock at Costco. So I did find two alternatives that are really good for me as well. So this is the Paul Mitchell Tea Tree Special Shampoo. This particular one, I find it's really good not only with controlling my dandruff, but because I have an oily scalp, it's quite strong. So I don't recommend using this for a double shampoo method. This one has a blend of tea tree oil, peppermint, and lavender. And then for corresponding conditioner, this Nexus Parafix Damage Healing Conditioner has been very good. I would say these two are quite on par in terms of quality. My channel is all about helping people learn how to shop and style more confidently while also emphasizing the importance of investing quality over quantity. So if you're interested in more of this type of content, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below. So in general, once I'm done showering, first thing I do is I squeeze out all the water out of my hair, never pull but just squeeze and squeeze the, hair, the water out of your hair. Do this several times until you feel like it's as dry as you can make it. So when I get out of the shower, I tend to like to air dry my hair. I don't have that much time to style my hair. I don't really use any products. I typically use two big towels, one for my body and hair, and then because my hair gets just so wet, I grab a secondary towel and then do just a padding motion like this. You don't wanna to be too rough with your hair, especially when it's wet, when it's prone to breakage. And and then I'll put on a cotton rope, which also helps absorb the moisture. And I completely underestimated how important it is to drink enough water throughout the day. I did a very bad job of that for a long time. So I'll make sure I down an entire cup in the morning when I wake up, another one in, at lunch and another one with dinner. And also the first thing you wanna do when you get out of the shower is you want to actually put on all your moisturizers to lock in all that humidity and moisture into your skin. You know when your hairstylist is drying your hair for you, the same kind of motion you wanna to do to your hair. Just to get all that wetness down to the bottom of your strands, you then squeeze it out. And then it's well prepped then for air drying. I don't touch it at all. I then put on my makeup or grab some breakfast. And after 30 minutes, maximum an hour my hair is almost completely dry and that way you don't waste your time or expose your hair to unnecessary heat and occasionally i will use products but it completely depends on how my hair feels that day when you sleep at night there's a lot of friction between your hair and your back as you roll around so one of the things i found very beneficial is sleeping on a silk pillowcase it does help with your hair texture when you buy a silk pillowcase it's really important that you find a machine washable one like this one from lily silk i've had this for over five six no, seven years now and it's still in excellent condition and as I'm air drying I will feel my hair and see how it feels if my ends still feel a little bit dry I will use some oil on my hair this is the same oil I use pretty much everywhere on my body um, I have very sensitive skin so I just use plain squalane oil on my face you can use it on your hair as well I'll just put a couple drops into the palm of my hand evenly distribute on the fingers. I notice if I put too much oil, my hair will just get greasy. So you have to be very, very light with it. And I never put hair oil in my hair when it is wet, like very wet. It's important to do it right before it finishes drying. Um, that way it doesn't stay like a greasy clump. What I finally realized was one of the main causes of my dandruff was the fact that I was showering quite late during the night because I was working so late. I would get out of the shower, dry my hair as much as I could, but then I would fall asleep on wet hair, which can cause fungi to grow on your scalp, like malassezia, which can cause dandruff or other scalp related issues. So if you do plan to air dry your hair, I now try to shower my hair during the day or if I shower at night shower your hair at least an hour or two before you go to sleep so your hair is dry before you go to bed and if you absolutely have to sleep on wet hair at a minimum try to use a hair dryer and dry your scalp I would love to know if you're implementing any of these tips I mentioned in the rare occasions that I do use heat I use this called the BB hairdressers bumble and bumble hairdressers invisible oil heat UV protective primer I will say I absolutely hate the spray part of this what I typically 
typically do is I actually spray it. See, it's terrible, but I will just spray it into the palm of my hand, rub it around, and then it gives me much more control over where I want to put it in my hair instead of spraying it all over the place. When I used to work crazy hours during my busy season, I used to put my hair up in a ponytail in a really, really tight bun. All of that stress and tension cause what is known as traction alopecia, because repeated and prolonged tension on your hair can cause hair loss. I was experiencing soreness everywhere on my head, especially where my hair was being pulled tight from those hairstyles. And I'll be talking a little bit later about how you can relieve that soreness. So what I do now is I wear my hair down if possible, and I absolutely have to put my hair up. I'll put it up, but just for a shorter period of time. In general, you shouldn't keep your hair in the same hair style for too long. There's a couple different ways you can put your hair up without causing too much tension on the hair. One is that you can use a very large claw clip like this. You can also use a silk bandana or you can also use silk hair scrunchies. That's actually one of my favorite ways. Or you can put your hair in a loose braid. So when I traveled to Taiwan a couple years ago, I went to some hairstylists and they really pointed out that my scalp health was really bad. It was very red, itchy. So now what I do regularly, I just look at my scalp in the mirror, check to see if it's red or the my regular skin color and then I'll feel around on my head and see if there are any sore spots and normally with a healthy scalp you shouldn't feel any sore spots. Scalp massages are really great for improving the blood circulation which means that more nutrients can flow to the hair follicles and it gets rid of waste faster and scalp massages can also be very therapeutic it helps reduce stress which is one of the very big factors that caused my hair loss and, and I'll get into that a little bit later and how I was able to overcome that personal stress. There are two ways that I do incorporate a scalp massage in my routine. One is if I don't have time, I'll typically shampoo my hair and then incorporate a quick scalp massage. If I do have a little bit more time, I'll use a hair oil at my roots and do the massage like that. And typically I'll do that right before I work out. I'll tie my hair in a braid after I use my hair oil and the heat from my skin that's building as I work out will help the oils be absorbed. One of the first ingredients in here is sesame oil, but there has been some research around sesame oil's topical application that it reduces gray hairs. Self-care is actually an important part of style that I normally don't cover as much on my channel. So I would love to know if you enjoy this type of content and have gotten value out of this video by clicking the like button down below. I was experiencing very high levels of stress, especially during busy season. I was working like 20 hour days sometimes dealing with high stress issues and I kept internalizing that I had no outlet and I was experiencing significant hair loss because of these stress factors. So if this is what's causing your hair loss, you need to find ways to to manage your stress more effectively. I really started reflecting on my career path and where I wanted to go. I started negotiating a work from home arrangement. A lot of companies now have EAP programs, employee assistance programs, where you can talk to somebody and really have an outlet for those emotions that you have. Massages really helped. I learned how to give myself body massages and facial massages that were extremely relaxing. And that's actually quite highly requested. So I'm gonna be coming up with a separate video on that. I'll link it somewhere up here or in the description box below below once it's out. I actually developed a whole routine for myself on how to help manage my emotions and stress. I feel like that's a whole nother video that I could do. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. So when I was working very long hours back in the day, I was not eating enough vegetables, not eating healthy, nor was I eating regularly because I just didn't have enough time between meetings. So the impact of a healthy diet for you may be tiny or it could make a big difference. It all depends on where you are right now and what you're eating. But in general, I found a very balanced diet especially antioxidant rich foods which helps with the graying hair this include green tea which I've been drinking every single day fish nuts seeds eating sesame seeds that's the one thing we tell me to do a spoonful of sesame seeds every single day not research proven at all it is just something that all my elders say that I've now been doing I've definitely seen less gray hairs it's just a food for thought literally. While I suggest everyone takes multivitamins to begin with, especially if you struggle having a balanced diet, beware of those hair gummies or hair specific vitamins. Sometimes they're just multivitamins, but specifically marketed for hair and nails and doesn't give you any more than what regular multivitamins give you. So if you don't understand the underlying cause of why you have hair loss, graying, or dandruff, then all the solutions that you've tried might be useless because it's not actually addressing the underlying problem. So for example, if your hair is graying due to aging, genetics, things that you can't prevent, you can't reverse that. And if your graying hair is due to vitamin deficiencies, then you can actually change your diet to help supplement that. So based on what I've mentioned so far, think through your routines and what kind of things that you've been doing that might have contributed 
towards your hair issues. So the best way to get to the root of those problems is number one, do your research, watch videos just like this to really understand what are some of the causes of the common hair problems. Start with the controllable factors first. Are you sleeping on wet hair? Are you not eating a balanced diet? Are you not washing your hair properly? So as you go through the list and narrow things down, if you realize that it's due to none of those issues, it may be the fact that it's hereditary or genetic, or you might be going through your pregnancy and you're experiencing significant hair loss, and eventually that will stop. And then the next thing is I simplify my hair routine down to the very bare minimum, and that way I can really track the progress of the specific things I've changed. So for example, I started using this hair care product for a couple weeks, but I didn't change anything else, my diet, any other products I was using, my routine, everything else stayed the same. And I'm able to measure exactly how this has impacted everything. However, if you're seeing moderate to severe levels of hair loss, graying hair, or dandruff, and you're not necessarily going through postpartum hormonal changes, you should definitely go to a doctor to seek their opinion. It could potentially signal an underlying medical condition or issue. For example, significant hair loss when you're not pregnant could be a sign of hyperthyroidism. If you're trying to revamp your hair care routine, it's important to go with it with an open mind and not to come with too high expectations. Did you know on average that people lose about 100 hairs a day? A couple of gray hairs here and there, or some hair loss it's perfectly normal to experience, especially as we age. Having a healthy and easy to maintain hair care routine is a great way to elevate your style naturally. And you can actually learn even more ways to elevate your style that don't actually require any money in this next video.